No issue in non-Muslim flood evacuees at mosques. Para and Kelantan floods recede slightly. Good afternoon, I'm Jessica Lee. Welcome to News on 2. The Department of Islamic Development Malaysia, or Jakim, said it does not see any issue with non-Muslims being among the evacuees at mosques, surahs and Islamic religious schools used as flood relief centers. Its Deputy Director General of Human Development, Datuk Zainal Abidin Jaffa, said there was no problem in using Islamic houses of worship to provide shelter for non-Muslims in accordance with the rules of fiqh. He said Jakim had come up with rules of fika on floods that explained to non-Muslims the regulations to be adhered to in mosques and surahs that were used as flood relief centers. Beberapa surau dan masjid kita benarkanlah untuk yang bukan Islam untuk bersama-sama mencari tempat perlindungan lah pada masa itu sebab kita nak pergi tempat yang jauh malam-malam kan air naik begitu deras. Jadi yang terdekat surau, sekolah agama, masjid. Jadi silakanlah. Alhamdulillah, jatuh kuasa tidak ada halangan. Datuk Zainal Abidin added that this was happening now in places in Kelantan where the nearest alternative accommodation for flood evacuees were mosques, surahs or Islamic religious schools. He said this after Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Datuk Sri Jamakir Bahrum, handed over flood relief aid to mosques and surahs in Kedah and Pulau Pinang near Kepala Batas, Pulau Pinang. He said the rules of fika on floods were first applied in Pulau Pinang on November 4th and later in Kelantan and Trengganu. The flooding in Perak as of this morning have improved, bringing the total of displaced residents at evacuation centres down to 77 from 130. According to the Perak State Secretary of the Disaster Management Committee, four relief centres in Manjung District were closed at 1 p.m. yesterday. Amongst the evacuation centres closed were Sekolah Kebangsa Nakoda Taib Segari, Dewan Orang Ramai Batu Lapan Segari, Sekolah Kebangsaan Dato Ishak and Sekolah Kebangsaan Muhammad Saman. Only two relief centres are still operating within Manjung District at Sekolah Kebangsaan Sungai Batu, Pantai Remis, which houses 82 residents affected while another 48 people are staying at Sekolah Agama Tebuk Yan. Meanwhile, the Dewan Orang Ramai Kampung Sungai Muda Evacuation Centre in Mualim District also closed at 7.20pm yesterday. The floods in Kelantan have also recorded a decline to 10,511 at 11 a.m. compared to 10,608 evacuees at 8 a.m. today. Now, the evacuees are housed at 36 evacuation centres in four districts, which are Kota Baru, Pasir Mas, Tumpat and Pasir Puteh. Pasemas has the highest record at 6,652 evacuees involving 2,936 families placed in 27 relief centres. In Tumpat, however, the total affected were 3,704 evacuees from 319 families. Meanwhile, flood levels in Sungai Golok in Rantau Panjang have remained the same at a dangerous level of 10.32 metres. Three rivers have recorded danger water levels with Sungai Galas in Dabong, Kuala Krai at 33.3 metres, Sungai Kelantan at Tangga Krai with 21.14 metres and Sungai Kelantan with 12.68 metres. Meanwhile, a number of flood victims in Trungganu rose to 1,479 people from 372 families as of 8 a.m. today as compared to 1,148 from 293 families as at 8 p.m. last night. Now, according to the InfoBanjir portal, the highest number of flood victims was recorded in Kuala Nerus with 824 people from 188 families placed at four relief centres compared to 478 victims from 104 families last night. Malaysian Civil Defence Force Trungganu Director, Lieutenant Colonel P.A. Che Adam Abrahman said that the sharp rise in number of victims in Kuala Nerus was due to the high tide phenomenon where water could not flow back to the sea fast enough, causing many housing areas to be flooded. He expects the situation to improve throughout the day.
The number of victims in Marang is at 497 from 142 families, and Dungun, with 45 from 11 families, remained unchanged, while Kuala Chunganu saw a slight increase to 81 victims of 24 families as compared to 65 from 20 families last night. Selangor Omno should focus on efforts to win the state in the 14th general election, or GE14, before thinking about the candidate for the post of Mantri Bursa. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Mazair Hamidi, who is also Omno Vice President, said the candidate for the post of Mantri Bursa could only be determined if Barisan Nasional BN won the state. Mahkamah Pendapat Umum inilah yang sebenarnya telah menghukum, menghukum Amno dan Barisan Nasional di Selangor kerana ia yang tergantung pada persepsi yang amat pesimistik dan negatif tugas Tan Sri Noh dan rakan-rakan di dalam kepimpinan AMNO dan Barisan Nasional Selangor dibantu oleh empat tokoh utama mantan-mantan Menteri Besar Selangor Tan Sri Khalid, Tan Sri Matayib, Tan Sri Abu Hassan, Dato' Sri Hei Toyo dan rakan-rakan yang lain kita penuh mengharapkan agar perubahan akan dapat direalisasikan. He said this after opening the Selangor Amno Convention 2017 at Putra World Trade Center (PWTC) yesterday. He reminded Selangor Amno to be wiser and not trapped by the perception game if they want to win the state from Pakatan Harapan. Selangor Amno needs to work harder to win the hearts and minds of the Selangor voters who believe the perception game during the 13th general election (GE13). Meanwhile, former Selangor Menteri Besar Tan Sri Khalid Ibrahim, who was a leader with opposition party PKR before being sacked in 2014, made a surprise appearance at the convention. Stressing that he is not there to rejoin UMNO, he will, however, aid and assist any political party in developing Selangor. Jadi kalau saya bebas, uh, saya tidak ada kepatian, tapi parti saya adalah rakyat Selangor. Jadi saya bebas. Kedua, Jadi itu lebih senang untuk AMNO untuk mengatakan dia bersama-sama dengan semua perkara yang meningkatkan uh, pembangunan di Selangor. As for the next general election, he said he would act independently without being officially linked to any party, including AMNO and PAS. Nasri Khalid, 70, served as Menteri Besar from 2008 to 2014 when he was pressured to resign after being expelled from PKR. And that's it from us in our top story. No issue in non-Muslims flood evacuees at mosques. Join us again at 7 this evening. I'm Jessica Lee. Thank you for watching.